Welcome, it's a great day to be a miner. In today's video, we got us a new piece of hardware. This is the Ice River KSO Caspa ASIC miner. Before we get into that, let's go ahead and spin that intro. Here it is in all its glory. This is the Ice River KSO Pro Caspa ASIC Miner. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. And what that means is it's a little mini computer that does nothing but mine Caspa and it mines it really well, really efficient. And uh, so before we actually unbox this thing, I'll go ahead and say this one cost me $480 total shipped to door no extra duty fees or anything like that because it's under i live in the states and it's under the 600 minimum and this came directly from ice river these things are second hand selling and actually second company selling for about 1100 1200 dollars us right now so yeah that's a little bit crazy but with the hash rate continuing to climb 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 these are very profitable, but man, with that hash rate keep building, it, it's going to be hard to ROI them very quickly if you're paying $1,200. But yeah, I digress. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing, take a good look at it. We're going to set it up. We're going to get it mining. So uh, you know what time it is? RGB knife? Engage. I missed that. All right, let's go ahead and open this guy up. We're going to take a look and see what $480 gets you direct from the manufacturer. I have two regular Ice River KSOs. They are not the Pro Edition. This is, of course, the Pro Edition. The Pro Edition, a lot of people thought, would just be a firmware update to give you more hash rate because you can, and I have, overclocked the regular KSO. Um, but that's not the case. The casing looks pretty similar. There's a slight difference on the fins, just a little bit of a difference. And the actual board layout inside of this shell is definitely different. So you wanna know what's in the box? What's, oh, in, the what's box? in the box? So there it is, it's packed really good. It's pretty much entombed in this really dense hard foam. And right there's what it looks like as soon as you open the box. And here's what we got. So that's interesting, I've got the um, actual standard plug for US and uh, the last one I bought had a European plug in it and the one before that didn't even have the power pack because I got it through a secondhand seller so yeah there is the main power plug and here is the actual power adapter and it has the bigger barrel plug that's what these use to plug in and then it is a hunt key um, power adapter, let's see if it says the specs right on here. It says it is a 100 to 240 volt, so you could use it either on the 120 or 240. It is a 19 volt adapter, 6.32 amps. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. And it's 120 watts. And they say that this will do 200 giga hash on 100 watts, but I already know that people will be overclocking these things. Overclock at your own risk. Um, as my man Mining King pointed out, there are risks to downloading random firmware from Joe Bob that has a IT degree and is uh, quite sneaky. So just a word, word of caution, let's go ahead and get this beast out of the box. We're gonna take a quick look at it and we'll talk about it some more. Um, this thing is like, when it's in here, it's in here. It's, it's entombed in there. Oh boy, might have to call help. Okay, we got it out. Nothing else in the box, just the just the ASIC itself and the power adapter and the plug that goes with it. So the first thing, first impression, I can immediately tell this is heavier. It is definitely weighs more than the regular um, KSO non-pro. And then another difference is the layout. The uh, ethernet is on the back, on the front. The ethernet used to be next to the power, I believe. So the layout of the board on the ports are definitely different. Um, the USB adapter on these things is a very necessary piece because you can run a USB fan on there and it's highly, I highly advise to run the USB fan. 
The fin stack on these are a little different. You've got a few down here across the middle that are actually angled at the bottom. And as we know in the IT world, more surface area is more heat dissipation. So it's interesting that there's a little bit less on the fin stack on this one, but it looks like the holes are only under, so the holes that blow the air through because you have two little mini fans down here at the bottom and the, the holes that they blow through do have the extra surface area angled um, on the fins. So they are at least cooling those fins directly. We've already seen Chump Chains did some heat testing on this thing and this thing gets fiery hot um, without extra cooling. So yeah, I think that's about it. You've got your barrel plug power, you've got your ethernet, you've got your um, power, uh, your internet and your power light indicators. You have a reset button right here. You've got a warning, don't to touch it because you will melt your fingers off when it is mining. And you have a USB plug and two fans. So yeah, let's uh, let's take a real nice quick look at this thing up close. Oh, and the, the fancy sticker on the side that says Ice River KSO Pro. The uh, regular didn't come with that and it does have the little serial number on the other side. But yeah, there it is. Let's take a nice good close up look at it. Real quick before I get this beast hooked up, here is the fans that I use for these things. These are the up here 120 millimeter. They are of course RGB because we all know that RGB adds hash rate. These are USB powered. You get a two pack and it's really cheap. It's like 20 bucks for a two pack and they even have a speed selector with them. They come with the grill guards to protect your hands. Um, they even come with grill guards for front and back and they are two separate fans it's a rgb fan 120 millimeter like i said and it has the little speed selector here off low medium high of course you're just going to have these on high the whole time if you're running a uh, one of these kso's but you literally can just hook them on right like that on the side and then that will provide you with that much needed cooling if you're doing a standard um, just a standard setup and you're not trying to overclock this thing you're probably going to want to lay it down like like so and then the fans are going to be pulling up through and then you're going to want this fan to pull on up through so you're exhausting so you're doing a pull through on the actual air through the ASIC itself. All right, all right, so that is a KSO regular, another KSO regular, both are overclocked. That one's doing 135 giga hash, this one's doing 155 giga hash. This one is bad silicon, actually this one's the one with the bad silicon, this one is good. Um, and then of course, this is our brand new one. Here was our setup, it was easy peasy. All we did was we set the fan right on top, it's not even screwed down yet, but we'll get to that. Oh, below the behind there is a iPolo Mini, just hashing away, getting some LTC and some ETC. And then up here, so here's our setup, real quick. We just set down the KSO, we set the RGB fan right on top, we ran it over to the USB, we turned it on high first off, we ran our ethernet cable right there, and we ran it up to our router, tucked away right there. So now we have our ethernet hooked up, and we have our fan hooked up. And the last thing is we just ran our power over to our power strip on the other side of this rig. And then we ran it. And then the last thing we did was we plugged in the barrel connector. Right away, these lights started lighting up. We got our lights here started lighting up. And then of course, showing our internet connection, our ethernet connection started flashing. So that is the hardware aspect. That is super easy. That's all there was to the hardware itself. And here is the KSO Pro, or regular KSO and another regular KSO. And as you can see, I'm using the fan to exhaust across the power supplies on these as well to keep them cool. And it's been working fairly well, but ever since I overclocked them, they do get a little spicy hot. So we might explore some different heat testing and different methods to see what the best way to keep these things cool are. So there is the physical 
set up and then we'll go do the dashboard setup and get them actually mining to our wallet and then we're gonna go ahead and talk about how we set it up and we'll close out. Let's roll. Well, there you have it. The KSO Pro is all set up. It's mining, it's hashing away. This one really set up super easy and it's probably because it's my third KSO. I have done a full in-depth setup guide. Make sure to check that out by the link up above. It will walk you through the entire setup. I'll go through a couple quick point pointers. Um, first off, I just stuck the KSO in place. I set the fan on there. I didn't even hook it down yet, the fan. I just have it laying flat. Turned the fan on to high. Plugged in the ethernet first, ran the power cable over, and then plugged in the barrel connector. Right away, the light started flashing. It was reading the ethernet. The signal was coming through. It starts hashing away all on its own right away. So then it is hashing to Ice River's default addresses. So then you need to log into the device. To do so, you need to find the IP on your network. The easiest way I found is to log into your main router. The standard main router 192.168.1.1. And usually if you haven't changed your password, which I have and I highly advise you to if you haven't, um, is admin admin on most routers. Different routers have different logins. Again, make sure you change your password much like I have. Um, for security purposes. Next, once you're logged into your router, you can find the connected devices, find that Ice River, and make sure to just open a web browser, go to that IP. That will open up the dashboard for Ice River. You, your default login for the Ice River device is admin, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As soon as you log in, I highly advise you change your password in that dashboard as well, so nobody else can log into your device. Once you are in there, you go to Miners tab and you go ahead and you strip out all of the default pools that are provided by Ice River. You strip out the device uh, default wallets. You put in your pool, your wallet. You put in the password, usually X, and then you go ahead and you save. Also, make sure you go down to the Fan tab change the fan click the little box beside the fan set it to 75 percent or 100 and then hit save there as well because those fans will not spool up by default unless that device is super hot so yeah then once it's running it should go ahead and recycle and just start right away start hashing away it takes about five minutes before it will show in the dashboard and then of course it does a 30 minute average as well and you'll start seeing your bar graph travel across Make sure to check your pool to make sure that shares are being received there as well. And if you are, bam, you're set up. It literally took me about 10 minutes to set this thing up. And yeah, I need to uh, put some screws in the fan and I need to get a longer ethernet cable and get it all set up properly, but it's set up. Quick, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, man, it's just making those profits now. Right off the bat, it fired up at about 210 giga hash and it's staying fairly consistent. And so yeah, if you have any questions or concerns, make sure to join the Misfit Mining Discord. There's always plenty of seasoned vets in there willing to help you out. And of course, comment down below, ask what you need. I try to help as many people as I can and uh, I think that about wraps it up. Let's go ahead and cut to that outro. 